Talk to me a little bit about Bahrain. That's what we're watching right now. Why does this matter to people who, half a million or a million people there, um, it's, it's been a U.S. ally. Why does what's happening in the streets there matter And as, this, as that story and the narrative in the Middle East moves forward? You know, Bahrain matters for one, I think, very important reason, which is that unlike in Egypt, Bahrain is fundamentally about a sectarian conflict. You have a Sunni monarchy that controls the vast majority of the resources in that country, a fairly wealthy country, and then you have a Shia majority uh, that is incredibly restive. Now, the demonstrations we've seen in Bahrain so far have not used Shia slogans, but they're all Shia. And if you're Saudi Arabia, uh, a Sunni government with restive Shia population in neighboring provinces, or you're Iran, a Shia government that's been supporting the local Shia in Bahrain. This is becoming geopolitical, geostrategic, and that's why we have to pay attention to Bahrain. There's an additional issue with Bahrain. is the base of the U.S. Navy's fifth fleet. So <laughs> turmoil there could have an effect if it become, becomes something more serious. Do we have think, to worry about that. Do you that. think what we're seeing in the Middle East is going to have an effect on oil prices, on the availability of oil, on access in the Suez Canal? I mean, is this, are these geopolitical headlines right now that will not have an economic impact or it's markets don't like uncertainty. We have to keep watching how it unfolds there. War is about, uh, you know, the turmoil spreading to other parts in the Middle East can affect, of course, oil prices. When the turmoil spread from Tunisia to Egypt for about a week, oil prices went from right. $90 a barrel to about $100 per barrel. Of course, that worries that the, if the turmoil becomes more severe, then it could crimp the supply of oil, could maybe control the Suez Canal and things of that sort. If that were to occur, of course, oil prices would go much higher. That's one of the risks. In a situation which already food and commodity prices are rising, inflation is rising in advanced economies and emerging markets, and these rising food prices led to food riots, not just in the Middle East, but also in Pakistan, in India, in other parts of the world. So that's a concern. Do you think the food prices keep rising from here? I mean, do you think this is going to be kind of a chronic condition in terms of food prices? or And how much of this do you blame on the Fed and pumping money into the system and hot money into the commodities markets, is that something that we should be looking at? Well, the rise in food and commodity prices is driven by many factors. On one side, there is a sharp increase in demand. China, India, right. emerging markets are urbanizing, industrializing, demand for food and other things is going higher. Supply, for a number of reasons, has not increased as fast as demand. And on top of it, this wall of liquidity with near zero interest rates right. and quantities in U.S. is also leading to money chasing assets in emerging markets in commodities and then there is also this herding behavior that occurs in these commodity price markets so it's a serious risk you know even in our country rising food prices has social effects but in countries where two-thirds of the consumer right. basket is oil energy and transportation and food that becomes a source of social unrest